That's part two, uh, oh, three point five. I remember part two. <laughs> it's a part three point five presented by William Ashby. It's part two of the talk that we heard already uh, a month ago, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's kind of part three or three and a half at this point. <laughs> but um, maybe two and a half, I don't know. But anyway, it's kind of a long ongoing thing. Um, so basically, uh, today, there's a lot of similarity between these papers. That's why I'm kind of grouped them like this. But uh, the first paper, they in the second paper, they use uh, neural ODE, ODEs to do what they're doing, basically. And uh, the third paper, they kind of, they they do the same thing without the ODE, and it's kind of like top of it in a way. Um, basically, uh, <clears throat> all three are using uh, neural networks to sort of create a uh, uh, set of gradients that you can use to, to form a mesh. Um, and Cortex ODE, I would say that uh, Cortex ODE was. Um, it's not, it's not as, they didn't really publish a lot of their code base. So uh, I usually don't like delving too deeply into papers that don't publish their code, but it, I thought it was a fairly well-written paper. So it's, a, it's actually a good paper to start with to kind of delve into what the, uh, um, the math of the ODE is. And uh, it also had some pretty cool benchmarks in the results section. So. Basically, um, this presentation will be, it's not going to go into every detail of all three of these papers because I, I just wasn't that interested in every detail of all these papers um, after reading so many of them and presenting so many of them. Um, basically, this is like the stuff that I haven't covered in previous papers as much as possible. Uh, try not to duplicate too much. And it turns out that like the stuff that's duplicated really isn't their contributions anyway. It's just like stuff that they had to do to, to get their stuff right. So um, I think this should be good. But uh, so basically, um, Cortex ODE, they're, able, they're, they're much faster than um, FreeSurfer, but it's, it's misleading, and I'll get into that later. Um, yeah, can we ask questions where you go? Because like, please, please. Uh, guarantees, and yet you need topology correction. That's the second bullet and third bullet kind of contradict each other. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, that's probably, I think, I think that's probably, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't thought about this deeply, but if I were to guess, um, they use topology correction to create their white surfaces. Um, and they probably don't use topology correction to create their peel surfaces, but um, because like, their contribution is is really not the, the creation of the white surfaces. The creation of their white surfaces, as far as I could tell, was exactly deep CSR, which uses um, topology correction. But they they mentioned that they implement uh, uh, the deep CSR's topology correction algorithm in Nimbo. Oh, so it's so, not the preserver. No, I don't know if they're exactly the same. Um, I'd have to check. Is it in that case? <laughs> You just implement this in free server, like the number one. Yeah, the thing about deep CSR's topology correction is it's written in Java. I don't think free server is written in Java, so the, the, probably the reason it's so slow is the Java part. I don't know where it's. But, you but can it's interesting though, because I mean, I think even if you would do the free server one, that would also speed up. Right, because number is more SIMD. Uh, right, yeah, it's more just like because I, you know, it's probably. Maybe maybe C, but probably not optimized. Yeah, so, right, right. I was just thinking because it's like eight hours, I think, for topology correction. That would take. Oh no, the topology correction part. I don't know how what proportion. Eight hours is the recon all. The well, just even if it, if all of it is deep, eight hours, it's twenty four minutes now. That's like. Yeah, their their speed up was pretty impressive with number. I mean, I think what he's saying is probably true because I kind of doubt that they. I mean, like the code base for free surfer is pretty old. I highly doubt that all of their grad students know how to write highly optimized code. Mm -hmm. 
in the absence of um, the libraries that were built for that. So I'm sure that you could probably speed free surf for upload significant amount just refactoring it. But just by leaving it free surf, just optimizing what yeah. it does. Yeah, I was just thinking because I mean one large part of the appeal of a lot of these methods obviously is that it's faster than free server. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to say that then this whole work is not, you know, interesting, but it's still, I mean, if you would do this for free server, that would have a huge just practical impact because I think sure. a lot of labs they don't use these neural network methods yet, but they do use free server a lot of them. So if you I mean yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely increases its ability to parallelize. But if you like look at like if you use like a new parallel when you're running FreeSurfer to process a bunch of subjects simultaneously, mm -hmm. you can still get pretty like high CPU utilization. Mm -hmm. But you just have to run them uh, the, the the subjects in parallel. Right. Yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> but it would definitely uh, help. Um, so, uh, so like like I said, uh, there. Their Python, their their library, um, their major contribution is going from white to peel. So that why they do that is is basically because I mean the important thing is they assume that you have a white mesh available um, in order to deform it, and uh, they don't publish their code base, so it doesn't really matter too much like everything that they do before that, but. Um, since we're not going to be using it, but um, but this assumption it, it's kind of an interesting assumption because uh, like it, it, if you if you try to get a deep neural network to predict the white and peel mo um, um, models independently, there's kind of a risk that they'll like interweave with one another or like <clears throat> they'll intersect. Um, when you create one and then like deform it to make the other, then you get two advantages, which is like one, they don't have it, they're less likely to inter intersect. And also, you know, the there's like a correspondence between vertices in one and vertices in the other. Like, uh, because it's like a diffeomorphic deformation, there's like it's invertible. So you can kind of basically like see that like this mesh is associated with this mesh. And apparently, some tools like to see that the meshes have a one one correspondence. I don't, I don't know if they mentioned which tools need that, but I think free server has a peel service that exactly corresponds to the white server. Okay. Because then that's it's like sense. easier to find the thickness because then you can just subtract one from the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of having to use camper distance, you you can use just a standard MSE because you know the correspondences. And, right, yeah. Uh, okay. So basically the, um, the what for people who uh, don't know, haven't read the neural OD paper. Um, basically, uh, you create these um, these uh, these fields where the the for the derivative and um, uh, the ODE like the if you have an initial value problem like you're at you're basically asking the ODE like um, if this is the initial point and I like wanted to form it like what path would it take through this this field and so basically like you it, it's kind of a it's got an update that's not too unlike um back propagation where you you select like a update time step so you take a step in this field and like the, these gradients tell you which direction and the size of your step basically um has implications for like how much error propagation there is and like how off track you get like the smaller the step step size, the more realistic the deformation is, um, but the larger the step size, the faster it converges and stuff like this. Um, so you're basically like, this is the neural network here, which is like where all the weights are. And uh, the T is the time steps. So like the number of updates that are going to occur, and this is the initial surface. So basically you give it the initial surface and you you can uh, which time step you're at, and it gives you like this big field that tells you how to deform the surface. Okay, so another thing I thought was pretty nice about this paper, the Coracle, Coracle flow paper, the original one, not the one we're covering today, goes into this to some extent. I don't think they do a very clear job of it. 
I thought this paper did a better job of it, but I'm still not going into it because I didn't feel like I'm getting into a proof in this presentation. But basically, um, like they're trying to prove that the, there's unique solutions to the IDE and that it's diffeomorphic and, and stuff like this. And the unique solutions exist if this if your um, if your uh, neural network output is is diffeomorphic. And, I mean, uh, Lipsch is continuous, which means that like the gradient is bounded by a constant or something like that. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into that, but there's a proof in the paper that if you're interested in the SHS theory. And constantly increasing, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be monotonically increasing. Yeah. Out. Does it? Uh, because yeah, right. I thought the, the derivative has to be bounded by this cone. So because there's a cone, I, I would assume that it can have a negative derivative. It just can't be a, the magnitude of the derivative has to be below. Oh, constant. sorry, I was missing the Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's well, just bounded to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was just thinking about if you want, it's the same with the like control models, right? You need to have a markdown increasing. Yeah, and it's also defined it for like the, the p norm. So, I mean, there's probably even more complicated ways of looking at this than, than what I've said about bounded derivative, but like. Basically, this is one of the interpretations of one of the lower values of P. Um, all right, so <clears throat> this, I mean, this is basically something we've already talked about a little bit. Um, so you you get this this uh, derivative field that tells you where uh, to, to to form the mesh based on the input mesh and. Um, the uh, input image, I think. Yeah, the volumetric input. Um, and basically, you sum up these the different the, the time steps. So t is the time step. So basically, like I was saying in the uh, previous slide, uh, you're basically you're taking a step in this derivative field in the direction of the derivative, and you're doing it multiple times. And I think they do it three times. I think that's pretty standard. No, that's in, that's in peel. They do it. They, they have a bunch of uh, different benchmarks at the end of the paper on how many times they do updates. And some some ODE solvers are more efficient than others at uh, like early on in the process and higher order um, solutions uh, are, take a little bit more time steps to, to, to do well, but then they do really well and stuff like this. And you can see that in the results section later. So uh, honestly, this was probably the most interesting thing to me about this paper, even though it's like not very mathematical. Um, I don't know, I guess like once I sort of understood the math of the IDEs, it was no longer as interesting. But the um, uh, the cube sampling I thought was pretty cool because like it was a, uh, it's a way to reduce the number of convolutions that occur um, in your MRI um, creation of surfaces. So like instead of having to do like length times width times height number of convolutions, you, you're scaling with like the number of vertices or near the surface. So basically you're only doing convolutions in the in the part of the MRI that is near the input surface. Um, so uh, that's a significant help. Um, I, I thought that was kind of intuitive because like it just like sort of like probing my own mind, like if I like see something in 3D, like I build a model of it, and then like that model can probably inform like my understanding of where to probe like attention going forward and stuff like this. So it's almost like, like it kind of made, reminded me of attention a little bit. Um, so basically um, these cubes, uh, get processed by, or basically processed by a convolutional operation it's the size of the of the cube and then if they get filled and fed into uh, MLPs and um, that gets combined with so that those are called local features so features that are derived from the MRI near the uh, input surface but from the MRI and uh, the point features are basically kind of like a primitive graph neural network, I would say. They're basically like getting information from the, the vertex and then uh, 
creating a uh, dense representation. I don't know if I have white, how you call it a difference with it. I don't know exactly know what you'd call it, but they're like upscaling the points. That's like a point cloud, point cloud, point net, I think, where they just like take a MLP and just predict based on the locations um, of the points, new features or something. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me. And then you get the C feature right for, for each. Yeah, and ulti ultimately these uh, two features get combined in order to make the final prediction of like what the the surface deformation uh, derivative field looks like. And so they use m cubed, right? Uh, yeah, they 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 mention how many cubes they use in the paper. I don't remember. And because they sounds concatenate across C, and m is the number of points, I assume, like small m, because it's m by three. And then you have the local features m by c on both sides, so point features and local features from the convolution. So I'm wondering, m probably is the cube of a cube, right? So they have the same number of cubist points. That's what I'm thinking. Is that true? Yeah, I I had some questions about that a little a little bit um, that I didn't take the time to go and investigate thoroughly because. Like if your resolution is higher than the number of voxels, then I would think that they wouldn't like have I mean, like what what happens when your uh, points are in the same region? Like are they are they redoing the convolutions that are basically the same voxel or what? But I don't know. I think I think they generally don't have more points than voxels, right? Uh, I think it wouldn't so, surprise me if they do because that's like one of the goals that we have is to get like higher than the box voxel resolution from the from the MRI in terms of like final model, which is kind of interesting. But do they compare it to free server because free server does it? Right? Uh, if they can, if they compare with free server, uh, it will be later. But I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I was paying more attention to the other uh, uh, point based surface reconstruction stuff. Okay, uh, so I mean, we've basically covered the slide in three different ways. So the only, the, the, I mean, the, the what's interesting in this is basically like, and maybe a discussion of your Euler midpoint and our range of cutout methods, but I go, I go into range cutout a little bit in the next presentation. Um, so I'm not going to do it now. But basically, uh, they uh, like a Euler is like a linear interpolation kind of thing where uh, it's a like first order approximation of the uh, solution, and uh, runge kata is like a higher order where um, it uses more terms to approximate the, the the differential equation, and basically like averages the derivatives in like a given area. But it was the same class integration methods. Yeah. Numerical integration. All right. So basically, here is where uh, I kind of punt and say, like, want to say that this whole portion up till here, you know, like uh, up until here, everything to the left of the red dot is basically deep CSR, except for they do some. Improved topology correction, probably here. Um, I don't see that they do topology correction later on, but um, so I, since I covered deep CSR previously, I don't want to get too deeply into it here. But basically, they uh, they create an implicit surface. Uh, they do segmentation, and then they um, they do their topology correction after they do these Gaussian blur stuff. And, um, then they use Morrison cubes, which basically like is an ISO extra extraction method, ISO surface extraction method, where they walk around the uh, implicit surface uh, at a constant value of zero and basically extract um, extract the surface, and then they get the white matter surface. So the ODE portion of this paper is after they get the white matter and when they convert. Okay, so their benchmarks. The benchmarks are interesting. I, um, but mainly because, like, just to see how much resource utilization uh, scales with the ODE solvers, because that wasn't in the other paper. So, 
uh, you can see that the memory com uh, complexity increases uh, to the point where it's getting, um, getting close to taxing our GPUs probably. Um, if you use Runge Cutta 4, but uh, the training time doesn't get too bad, I guess. That was still four times slower. Yeah. Uh, but the accuracy does increase also. And on um, and this slide, you can see more details about this. So uh, ASC is average symmetric surface distance. So basically it's like a way of measuring distances between two surfaces. House door difference distance is also a way of measuring distance between two surfaces. Um, Self-intersecting faces is kind of like how many errors you have in your surface and in time, uh, how long it takes. So Euler, I mean, it's bad for the dis like geometric measures, um, but it's it's efficient in terms of memory um, time. Uh, but the other methods, uh, the, I mean, this is kind of like I, it would be basically a hyperparameter search in and of itself of like how many steps you want to search, uh, whether you want to use one of these methods or not. Um, there's probably a sweet spot for specific applications on which would work better than others because uh, they don't all, there's not like one clear winner here as far as I can see. But the number of steps is basically like how many times they step through your field and, and uh, move the surface along the field. So. It, it's a standard node uh, kind of approach. There is a neural network that generates parameters for this uh, solve for the same differential equations mm -hmm. and different solvers just solve them. Right? Yeah, and it's I think it can back propagate through the solver. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, the number of steps. Uh, you back propagate through the number of steps. The, uh, so this is their, how, how much impr improvement they got out of using Numba instead of like the original implementation of topology correction in Java. So, I mean, they said it was a 20x speed up, but it looks pretty easy to say that that looks correct, I guess, from the numbers they report here at least. What is it? So they say a regional, so a regional must come from somewhere. It comes yeah, from yeah. deep CSR. Oh, from deep CSR. Um, but twenty percent process files. What does it mean? The Euler number just implies that these are genus zero surfaces. No, 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 the process voxels. Why is one twenty percent? Why are they comparing the runtime for twenty percent voxels against ninety-seven? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. The process, the process voxels, the column. It's what is in it? Plus in it uh, when it's plus in it for Python, yeah. then, then it's twenty percent for some reason. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. But do they mean that they only process twenty percent of the buffer? Probably. I, I think this is like like if, uh, doing topology correction without looking all of the, at the, all of the data. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's like there's probably a trade off between like looking at everything and being fast. So sorry, they they do like the way they train it is they sample points. Mm -hmm. so, I, so it seems that they only sample 20% of them. Uh, I don't, I don't know. That doesn't seem like a fair comparison, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, because then it's like, if you do times four, then all of a sudden it's only five times. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it would be interesting to know if, if this, is similar to their cube sampling where they use the input surface to inform where they look, but I don't know. Five times is significant as well. Early GPUs. No, 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 true. I mean, 20 is the best. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is much nicer. <laughs> also, um, I would, but I would take five time when you think about No, 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 for sure. I'm not saying that it's bad. Give me five time and look. So the original uh, topology correction, it's only 21 seconds. Is this for this is for deep CSR? This isn't for sure. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, even that, even so, it's still hard to believe because I've run deep CSR and that's kind of hard to believe. To fail very slowly. Uh, I mean, I, I remember being more than 100 seconds, to be honest. But I don't know if that was specifically the whole the topology correction only or if that was the whole like whole run or what. But, 
worth looking into. Um, so this is what I was like here, as far as I can recall. I didn't, they have another graphic that was cortical thickness, but I didn't really go into that. It wasn't that informative. Where our truth here is freezer over rate. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, that seems to be everybody's way of getting ground truth. All of the, the, I mean, they use different data sets, but I think all the data sets are processed with free servers. So. so how do they train, how do they train uh, neurology? Uh, they start with uh, white matter surface and they run the OD fully to generate the PL and then they penalize it if it didn't get it, right? Not on step by step base, but on the final result base. I'm sorry, I was kind of like reading the, the, the graphic. <laughs> yeah, just trying to figure out how they train the neurology or the sort of like by so they run run the integration fully, the differential equation until it gets to the PL surface, right? Mm -hmm. And then they compute the error and then they propagate the error, change and run it again. Is that a good assessment? Of what is it? That sounds correct. I'll probably yeah. talk, talk to you more about it. Mm -hmm. Or how we're implementing stuff like this. Um, but uh, anyway, so the, um, okay, so basically, this is the end of that paper in general. Um, the cortical flow plus plus framework is not all that different, except uh, I mean, it, instead of using deep CSR as its, as its foundation, it, its foundation doesn't is faster than deep CSR. So, um, and they publish their code. So, I, I'm pretty interested in this paper, um, but their writing skills are pretty terrible, in my opinion. So, so they start with the dolphin and get the walnut. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. That's um, not from, from Python. Um, so the math we've already covered basically, like you have the differ differential equation, you have the um, the, uh, the neural network, which is probably you know, I think, and um, you have the uh, the s is the incremental time steps, and x is the input surface. And so you basically have to march through these these fields like we mentioned before. Um, so the the key difference here is that they um, they start with a spherical a spherical uh, mesh template and they they make an update to the, the template that they start with their their old template um, involved uh, uh, I, I'll talk about it later but it's okay I'm I'm, I'm, I'm having a blank but it, it, I go into more detail in this slide, so I'll talk about it later. But basically, they start with a mesh and then they, they deform it to the endpoint and they get features from UNET and predict the flow field to deform it. So what's DMD again? Uh, Diffeomorphic deformation module. Mm -hmm. So uh, the deformations are invertible. Uh, which means they're just unique solutions. And they also have the, the Lipschitz proof, not in this paper, but in the cortical flow paper um, to prove that it's invertible, unique, and stuff like this. Um, now, how do they train UNET? Where do they take the flow field from? Uh, I think it's part of it, it's learned from Brack Prop. Oh, so, end to end, there is no actual flow field, it's no. whatever. Whatever. At least they don't talk about it in the paper. Uh, I find, mm -hmm. find out like, there's more information in that code, but uh, my impression is it's learned from Backprop, which is the uh, mm -hmm. free yeah, server could be. But this is not different from when you presented cortical flow. Like, no, there's not much here, and I don't. I spend a lot of time on this paper here, to be honest. I just like uh, have this here is kind of formality. This is like basically exactly the same as cortical flow. But the idea is the same. Start with a surface like white surface and go to peel. No, they that is their their their, uh, their contribution for this paper is instead of independently predicting white and peel, they now predict white the way they did in corporate flow, but they predict peel 
um, as a de deformation of the weight. So there's not a lot of contribution to this paper. Um, they also changed the way they, the, the, they formed the original template mesh, which I'll talk about later. And um, I, think, I don't know if there's much else contribution in this paper, honestly. Is they, publish, they published the code at the same time they published this paper, so. Um, well, that's good, finally. Finally, so. They kind of got two papers out of one. Um, you know, where was it published? I don't remember all that. Uh, so, uh, so basically, like the loss, the, the, out, the output of the deformation and the number of times the template. So, right, I need to go back and slide. Um, so, you, the de deformation module takes a template an image and runs the image through unit features and then performs deformations based on the predicted uh, uh, flow field. And that's what they call like CF theta. Um, they do that multiple times based on how many time steps they take to this flow field. And basically the paper says that the number of deformations is three, I believe. Um, for their original deformation. Um, but they have a unit associated, like each subsequent unit is aware of the uh, all the deformations that have happened thus far. So it seems like the, 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 the later neural networks get larger and larger as far as I can tell. Uh, so basically they deform the mesh and then they take the loss between the uh, the deformed the mesh and the ground truth. I thought they're using kind of tiny units in order to fit in, in GPU memory, like two or three layers only, or something like that. Out of it. Their memory, GPU memory footprint, sure. I didn't put it in this paper, but was about three gigs for what they were doing. Yeah, that's not large at all, but they're doing sub, sub cubes or the whole brain? I think, I think they do the whole brain. They do some cube sampling in this paper, maybe. Uh, I don't know. That's not, uh, if it's not in the presentation, they don't do cube sampling. But we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, OK, so basically, here's where I talk about runge cut a little bit. So like, instead of doing like a linear approximation, they do this uh, approximation of the derivative that involves four terms. And it's a weighted average of the of the, the field. So, okay, yeah, complex hole. That was the word I was looking for. Um, so basically the original template mesh was like a convex hole of like their entire training set. And now instead of it being a convex hole of their entire training set, it is a uh, bounding box of the union of their training set. Then after they take the union of the bounding boxes of all of their meshes, they uh, they did, and um, they use Laplace and everything to get rid of the edges where there would be rough edges. They get smooth, and that's used to uh, as like the where they map their surfaces on to to do loss calculations. Uh, I mentioned this already. Yeah, so uh, one of their contributions, instead of like independently calculating the white and peel surfaces, they create the white surfaces the way that they did in cortical flow, and then they create the peel surfaces by deforming it um, from the white, which allows a correspondence between meshes similar to the previous paper. In fact, all, all three papers do this. Um, It allows to use MSC losses we just mentioned earlier. And here's some, some aesthetic results. Uh, they have published um, tables of like thickness and like who, who does best, but honestly, uh, I prefer the method section when we get through it but to focus on their tables that much. Um, they compared it in this PLN, which is the next paper. So I'll go into what PLN is. Um, 
this next. Uh, so, all right. So the, the definition of PLM then is given an initial white matter surfaces, which is uh, vert vertices, edges, and faces uh, in a target uh, peel surface, which is uh, vertices, edges, and faces. Uh, and an uh, MRI image, the goal of the deep learning based peel surface reconstruction is to learn a neural network G such that the coordinates of uh, the new mesh are a function of the neural network. So the, it's also learning deformations, but it's not using an ODE. Um, what's interesting about this paper, I would say, is that it, uh, it's, I mean, it's fast, although the fastness of it is dependent on the assumption that there is a white surface already similar to the first paper today. Um, but it does cube sampling and um, image pyramid. So it's cube sampling from different resolutions. Um, and it gets features in a very similar way to uh, Cortex ODE and Peel and then. In fact, I, I would say that like it's when reading those two papers, you wonder like they 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 they're almost identical in a lot of ways, except for the fact that there's an ODE and uh, cortex ODE. So basically, um, cube sampling with image template uh, image pyramid um, creates these local features from the MRIs, which and which gets combined with uh, point features from this input white surfaces. The input white surfaces inform the cube sampling if it hasn't been made clear that basically the surface tells the um, convolutions, or which convolutions would occur instead of the whole, whole image. And um, this is just uh, a description of the deformation block, which is the neural network that does the deformation. So you have it update to your surface vertices based on this equation, um, which is expanded here, which shows the neural network. So the neural network is basically predicting uh, how far to perform. And I think I think the big difference between the ODEs and this is that the ODEs take larger, can take more steps. Um, I think there's like three deformation blocks in this paper. Um, and uh, the ODE papers take like, can take up to like 100 time steps, at least in one of the papers. Um, I don't know if there is a lot of value to the ODEs or not, because uh, Top of Fit um, does pretty well and it tells everyone how to deform, but it doesn't use an ODE, and, but it uses graph neural networks. So there's probably some like uh, how well you get. Uh, the graph neural networks basically improve how well you get features from your surface and um, basically have the quality of the information that's in your features that you're taking from your MRI and your surface results in the quality of your surfaces. So a lot of these papers have a lot of, uh, like you could merge a lot of the coolness of all of them and get like this omnibus model that's marginally better than all of them, but they're all very similar. Um, the loss functions uh, between papers are a little bit different. The, some of the papers from last uh, time were they used um, like curvature weighted loss functions and um, instead of uh, MSC loss or uh, camphor loss and the, the curvature weighted loss functions seem to improve things. So um, some of the papers have cool loss functions. Some of the papers that do cube sampling um, and uh, it seems like there's a trade-off between how, how powerful your architecture is and how, how strong your loss function is. Like, it seems like the stronger your, your architecture is, like if you cube sampling, if you have uh, graph neural networks, you can, uh, um, if you have a correspondence between your white and peel surfaces, things like this, you can use some poor loss functions. But if, uh, if you don't have that correspondence between your white and peel surface, then you have to use uh, more computational intensive loss functions. And, so, um, the Laplacian smoothing 
occurs on their created meshes and they get around doing topology operation, I think, with uh, using smoothing at several steps. Basically, the meshes come out a little blocky and then they, um, they smooth it so that um, according to this equation, which has a hyperparameter lambda and um, basically for every vertex, the new vertex location is updated according to this equation, which has a smoothing term and sums up around the neighborhood of this vertex. And uh, the, the smoothing term basically uh, results in smoother messages, but I mean, smoother mesh, meshes, but the mesh loses some information, I would think, in um, the smooth process. So um, you, you might lose some effective resolution here, but it's not good resolution, maybe, I don't know. Um, the loss, loss term here is messy because they have a correspondence between white and field surface. Um, and here are some results that the only thing, the only results that I found particularly interesting to look at in this paper were the time, because basically uh, they, at this point, there's a lot of uh, uh, deep learning based reconstruction methods that compete with ReSurfer in terms of quality. Um, but they all vary in terms of time to considerable, considerable amounts. Deep CSR is the slowest, but you can get really good resolution out of it, even though it's marching cues. Um, but uh, PLNN is, is fast, but this is actually misleading in a way because it assumes the white matter surface exists. So. And the is correct. I mean, if there's topology problems in the, the white matter, so no, no, like they, they would not generate topological incorrectness. Yeah. I, I don't think they do any topology correction. It's not actually. Oh. Um, but uh, one thing that, that would be interesting to me in terms of uh, how much time do we have left? Oh, um, and one. In terms of like an improvement to some of these papers, like is if you move remove the topology correction um, and you generated like a kind of like a crude white matter surface, could you do cube sampling still and maybe like widen uh, the size of K, which is like the cube size, and then like recreate a good peel surface? I don't know. But and then like maybe like use the peel surface to predict the white surface. So like skip the topology correction at like a really like, crude white matter surface, predict a good peel surface, and then predict again a better white matter surface or something like that. Um, uh, I mean I've seen I've seen refinement networks in different papers and like image and stuff like this. So I wouldn't be too hard too far. Up. So why aren't they starting from a sphere? Why are they starting from a surface already close or correct to the brain? Uh, because it would be too slow to converge, or it just gets would get stuck in the local mean. Uh, they need to be at solution or near. Solution. I think their starting point appears to be an average of like their data set, but it's really more specifically, it's a bounding box of their entire, entire data set, which is smooth. Um, I think that puts it in a place that's canonical and uh, probably helps the neural network know that there's a consistent starting point. Uh, why don't they start near the brain? I don't. You could probably do that. I mean, I guess you could use a network to predict like a crude original template and then like um, uh, train the network to work from there. And uh, it may or may not work. I uh, don't think it's a bad idea. Uh, well, like when they when they bring a new subject, uh, I don't have a data set. I don't have a free server. I don't, I don't want to. That's the point, right? But isn't it just like having a group? Groups from what? Like from MNI, somewhere. MNI just, and yeah, just some kind of random template. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it doesn't have to be random. Oh, I mean, unrelated to <laughs> my subject. No, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's well, MNI I is just whatever people they No, no, no of course. I know, but like, yeah, I wouldn't say it's random anymore. At least you can tell me people use it. It, it was random at first a little bit, but 
I think uh, um, I didn't put it in this presentation, but the, the switch from convex hull to the bounding box with the, the plus and smooth made the template look smoother and uh, the, the convex hull mesh was kind of blocky, so there's probably some difficulties mapping onto a blocky template. I don't know. Maybe it's easier to if you have map onto smooth than. Well, one thing that I could also imagine is that you now can like uh, it's easier to do group comparisons again because you know what the what the vertices are from, right? You have a invertible uh, mapping, and and it's kind of like as if you map your uh, your data into MNI 152, right? You can map it back, and you know which you know. But like I said, hidden subdivision, the pre-surfer uh, mesh. I mean, it's the same no matter what. You can start with the surface, the uh, right. sphere, sorry. Uh, yeah. you know no, sure, but it's harder than if you map. Sure, but I, I mean. I, I mean, if your result is cor correct or close to correct, you know this point is that point. Right. Like yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, yeah. What I was actually wondering also is like, um, do you use any of these in your research? Like, how does it tie back? Uh, I'm, I'm basically, for the summer, I'm basically implementing most of these in singular containers and looking for ways to improve them if I can and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I don't know what so far. It's just um, I'm not at the process where I'm committed to the method of how to improve it. Are you going to write a review? I don't. I'm open to paper suggestions that people can think of ideas from how. To work yeah, review would things. be nice if you can summarize. I, I'm sure, but currently no one can run all of these methods. No, those are kind of dead papers. Right. right. And that's what William is trying to overcome so that it's very easy to run. I really, I mean, I've enjoyed it. It's probably something that I don't, I don't know if, it, if everybody, like, if you can like absorb everything from the paper, like with just phenomenal reading comprehension, then I don't think you need to re implement everything. But it seems like a lot of the papers are comparing multiple methods anyway. So I mean, like, it seems like I would need to be able to, to reproduce the results to have like a list of comparisons anyway. So if there's any improvement, that'll be that stage of like, will be done. But honestly, the, the, some of these papers, uh, Corporal Flow++ plus plus in particular kind of made, and the similarity between all these papers kind of made me think that like, you can make fairly small changes and get a paper out of it. So I, I, I would prefer to like do something a little bit like, I mean, like the, the only things that I can think of doing is like replacing like the ones that are dependent on an already generated peel surface, you can combine them with like the like the fast ones that already generate a white surface or removing topology correction and seeing if cube sampling still works or uh, I don't know. Uh, just, yeah, but we need that, we need this uh, tool so, for example, uh, in the parallel work, William and uh, an undergrad student working on uh, setting up fast pipelines for FMRO, fMRI, and EMG processing. Mm -hmm. And for EMG inverse problem solving, you better constrain it with cortical surface. Mm -hmm. But then, in our, in our end goal, is uh, to have MEG averaged over ROIs and uh, have ROIs and time courses of those ROIs. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, like, if we run not fully correct, not even topologically correct surfaces, if we use them uh, for that, because we're averaging out all of those inconsistencies, anyways. Would uh, would those models, rough models, but fast, like zero point five seconds for pylon, be enough? So that would be an interesting thing that we have fast pipelines for pro, uh, processing and more small solving and everything. So yeah. there is a lot of use to it. Yeah. I think you could probably get better point features by using better graph neural networks. And I think it'd be interesting to see, uh, see it's self supervised or unsupervised or something like that. That would be like, in my mind, like the holy grail that says, like, get rid of free surfer, make sure you don't have it. Be the ground truth, but I don't know how to do that obviously. But yeah, well, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a research program. That's your like next step. If you can yeah. take it to a, a self supervised, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a lot of work. Yeah, but even that, even like before research, this tools are useful uh, or can be useful for uh, 
uh, other stuff that we're doing. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. like you want to extend it and add something not trivial on top of that, of course, not like a minor notification. Yeah, but I wouldn't be against papers either. Sorry, really, just to finish, uh, yeah. because by writing even an incremental paper, you learn how to write papers. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, there is a value in it, and not for the overall community, but for the writer. All right. Okay. Any questions from uh, people who are online? Not really. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's way for Brad. You gotta ask a question, Brad, right? What was that? What are you gonna ask a question? I said I don't have any questions. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, you were copying and it wasn't clear. Okay, well then. Uh, thank you, William. We need to have a planning meeting, I guess, next Friday. We don't have a paper uh, or papers plan on our calendar for going further. If you have a suggestion, any one of you, anyone here, uh, that you want to present next Friday, maybe even for 30 minutes so we can have a planning meeting, or if you don't have a suggestion yet, please have one by next Friday. And let's uh, create that Google Doc. It's pinned in the channel, in the reading group channel. And uh, think about when can you, what do you want to talk about? Or what do you want us to discuss all together and talk about it. Thank you. Bye-bye.